We are finally, finally starting a new parrot, which is very exciting. Uh, it's actually funny because we just finished, obviously, the longest parrot, which we were on as Haggai recorded for about three and a half months or so, I believe he said. And we are going to start and finish this parak tonight and even start the next parak because this parak is actually ironically very short. Um, we were learning, obviously, for months about the Mida of Nikias. The way the Messias of Charm has been structured is that when it talks about a Mida, it discusses the details and parameters within the first chapter of that Mida. And then it has a whole chapter about now how to acquire that Mida. So we just spent the, whole, the long chapter of Parakir Aleph was about the details of Nikias, which is obviously about perfecting one's character traits, being aware and cognizant of all the details and permutations involved within uh, mitzvah, ase and lo ase, certainly. And also the last third of it was related to Midos. And now he's gonna say this parak is, is Kinyan Hanikias, is how to acquire that Mido, now that we, certainly uh, know it very well. So he says as follows, ham soy hamiti that the means and ways to acquire Nikias, who asmada hakriya b'divrei chachameinu zechon l'vracha. The way to do it is to learn, right? Chaga, you're here in America. Mamish, your job is just to learn, right? So oftentimes, right, learning is a... Uh, Learning is the most important thing. Uh, there is even a, a question in the Machlokas and the Gemara about whether it's more important to learn or to do. And the Gemara says, I believe it says, learning because you won't be able to know what to do without the learning. So learning is extremely important. And over here, over here, so he says, how do you acquire Nikias? And remember that Nikias is not just wanting to stop the the mida not or st stop sinning that was really zahira zahira is a saying like is saying like i'm going to be czar i'm going to be careful not to sin nikias is knowing all the details being so familiar with it and so i guess like so careful to not do anything related to that sin so how do you know what's related to it how do you know all the details about hecha shabbos about bore right so yeah you have to learn so the way I've been describing right now is certainly within the realm of halacha, for example, I just gave, but also this also applies to Musa, right? And uh, over here in the, the Savior here, I'm learning, so there's a footnote here, a long footnote that discusses how, how really when it comes to wanting to perfect one's midos and wanting to stop oneself from sinning so learning obviously you have to know what you are what you can't do and but when it says learning so what's referring to is kind of being mechazic yourself right as we are learning Sharm right now Sharm is a musar savior so the goal of this for ourselves aside from the goal of tamatar and to know what to do but it's to be inspired and give us the drive to take it into action. And that's what, in, in order to become a Naki, to fulfill the Midah of Nikias, uh, it doesn't just involve halacha, but it involves learning muster. And he continues, After a person has now confirmed and understood exactly what's, what is necessary in order to be to achieve the Mida Mikias. Achar Shekvar Hisika Zahiras Vaz Rizus. After you've already achieved the Midos, remember there's all a hierarchy. You gotta go in order, right? Um after you've already been Zahir, you already removed yourself from the sin. And you are Zariz, you're running after mitzvos. That your Ozik in, in those things to uh, to be to be Kona in and you're distancing yourself from things that are not going to help you achieve this goal. So what's stopping you, the thing that's holding you back now from the kios is the details and the knowledge of what it really entails 
to be careful to not violate the sin. So Hilchel Shabbos is our, all of Hilchel Shabbos is a great example for this because a person could say, I want to keep Shabbos. I want to do my best. I don't want to, I don't want to violate Borer. I know you're not supposed to take the bad from the good. There's certain, right? So there are many details that a person has to know and has to learn about in order to really be able to, to fulfill that. There are plenty of times a person just has no idea if they're doing something right or wrong. Right, so learning is the learning is certainly the icker. It's not just the personal drive that, that one has. And continues Vialkane, and therefore, he halachos al buryam that a person has to thoroughly learn and and know uh, learn the halachot. But that's ante hamitzvos at hechan heimagim to know branches, the offshoots of the mitzvos. To know the the details that are involved in it, how far they reach, what examples, what uh, parameters are these? Are these is the is this mitzvah those I say involved in? Begam lefisha shechacha mitzia bedvarim hadakim ha'ilah. And he says it's very common. I certainly this is certainly one of my uh, big weaknesses. He says it's very common to forget the details, right? So. Someone could ask me a question. This also applies like machshava. Someone could ask me a question, and I'll like remember some maybe broad topic. Have zero idea who said it. Remember, won't remember like a lot of the other things I learned. But like remember some broad thing, right? So here it comes to law, like hachashav is like remembering broadly laws related to borer, like knowing that you're not supposed to do something, have to be can't select certain things, right? It would be like that, but not realizing, oh, but there, there are three times if you want to take the good from the bad and if it's for an immediate use. And like, to remember all that, that's that's not so easy. Obviously, I'm just giving one example, but in general, to, to know the fine details and be so familiar with it is not easy. So what should someone do? He's, he says, Hine, lo hasmada hakriya basfarim hamivarim ila hadikdukim. Therefore, a person should specifically be familiar with these, with the uh, svarim, like a person should learn, learn these halacha to uh, get familiar with all the details. And he's actually referring, I believe, to not learning it a first time, but learning it a second time or a third time. In order that it becomes a new to you and you you remember it, it's fresh in your mind. The azvadaish is or the kaimum. Then you're going to be inspired to keep it. So a person may have at one point learned so much and then, you know, years later you forget it. So he says, how do you really achieve Nikias? Is you go back and you make sure to learn the halacho to be familiar with the, the details of the halacho in order to actually achieve Nikias. Because you won't be able to achieve Nikias unless you know what you have to actually do. And also, of course, as we said, tied to uh, just learning in general for the inspiration involved that gets us to want to achieve Nikias. And certainly when it comes to Midos, right? A person wants to perfect their Midos. So that's like kind of what we're doing with um Sashar. And he says you gotta it's important to to, to learn Musar from the, the earlier Musar Swaram or the Akhron and the later Musar Swaram. It's all important because that's how to really refine one's midos. I think it's twofold, both in terms of knowing what is entailed in the midos and also being inspired, right? The more you learn about jealousy and how bad jealousy is and the parameters of jealousy and the punishments for really being jealous and the social impact it'll have on you, a psychological impact. So the more you learn about that, the more you're going to want to stay away from jealousy. He says, there are plenty of times, even after a person says and feels that they want to be naki, they want to achieve nikias in a certain area, it's certainly possible they're still going to make a mistake and they're still going to sin within its details. Because they just, they just didn't know this. Nobody is born a genius, right? Um, it's ironic because in the womb, you actually learn Kula with an angel. 
But then when you're actually born, you forget everything, right? So nobody is actually born a genius. And it's impossible to, to, to know everything, to, be, to literally be a know-it-all. But a person has to learn then in order to know that which he doesn't. And to uh, contemplate and think that which you didn't originally know. And he's saying to, that there are certain things you won't even necessarily find in the Svarim. Uh, the way it's explained here, the footnote is that it's referring to examples where there are certain times, certainly when it comes to Midos, where there are thousands of examples that could apply to jealousy. And a person, there you can't read in a book necessarily every single example, every situation will come up, right? Oftentimes, right, when you have Shilohs, so a person will go to a rock for a Shiloh, and it might not always be like such a clear classic shaila. It might not be like, oh, when's uh, what's the halacha if I forgot to daven chakras? Right? It's not necessarily. It's not like something that might be so clear and obvious, but it might be something related to modern technology, uh, right? And like, where do I even get the answer for this? Is there is there something wrong or usher related to, related to this? And and. And the more person learns in Swarm, he says, that the more person learns, the more kind of it penetrates who you are, the more you're going to be awakened to, to work on yourself and to have these thoughts. Then you're going to go and you're going to pay attention to all the different possibilities. And you're going to find to produce the original ideas for self-improvement, which emanate from the source of truth, which come from the Torah. That uh, I think in a certain sense, what he's saying is that when a person learns a lot and deliberately wants to be very careful, then a person's gonna be able to intuit what they should and shouldn't do in certain situations. Because not every single example come up. Obviously, a person asked me, Rob, but we're discussing cases where you have learned a lot, right? You are in the in the ballpark already. The Amnam, Mafside Hamida Hazos, says the factors, the things that make it difficult for a person to achieve this, that hold a person back from achieving this Mida. Hinehim Mafside these are the same things that hold a person back from fulfilling Zahiras, right? Zahiras says, I want to be careful to not sin. So what holds me back from that? Not knowing what the mitzvahs are. So over here, not being familiar with the, the knowledge of, and the laws and the Muslim involved, Moshe Gassafi, as I wrote earlier. Below Amar Aretz Chassid, that you can't be a chassid in this literal sense of a pious person, someone who's upright and goes beyond the letter of the law. If you're an Amar, you don't know anything. Because if you don't know something, you're definitely not going to be able to do it. Not going to be able to fulfill the mitzvahs if you don't know what the mitzvahs are. The Chain Amar says in Kedushin, that learning is greater than the that learning is greater, that's what I was saying before, I guess I got it from here, <laughs> that learning is greater because learning brings a person to action. Machlokas is better to learn or to perform. Obviously, performance in this is extremely important, but um, also maybe they might say. Okay, so that is how to acquire the Midah of, of uh, Nikias. Now, Nikias of Sharm is kind of broken up into two parts is how it's uh, explained here. One is kind of becoming a uh, tzaddik and the other is becoming a chassid. You don't need your strimal or your bekasha to be the chassid category. But uh, up until now, the first 12 prakim are to fulfill the mitzvos and to be on the madrig of a tzaddik. So if you think of what's a tzaddik, so tzaddik is someone it's extremely righteous, fulfills all the details 
of Hashem, who has great midos, right? And up until now, that's what we saw, right? Someone who's careful to avoid sin. Someone who runs after mitzvahs. Someone who knows all the details and is so careful to avoid any remote factor of sin. That's a tzaddik. And now we're going to get into the madriga of a chassid. That when it comes to being a chassid, that's kind of going above the letter of the law. And doing things that aren't necessarily chayuvim, but things that certainly bring a person closer to Hashem and a certain dvekas to Hashem. And we're going to see kind of a parallel where we're about to start about precious being porish or moving oneself, let's say, from like physicality and things like that. And that's kind of, it's going to be, one could look at, let's say, what we did with Zahiras, and Zahiras could parallel precious. And we're going to see like certain parallels uh, as we go. Um, so we'll just start this. We'll do this for, just for a little bit. Ha-precious hitchilas ha chasidus. Precious is the beginning of Hasidus. Betire, shakom ma shebearnu adata. You should know that everything I said until now, kum ma shemitztarcha l'adol me sheyeh tzadik. Is what I was saying. This is for a person to be a tzadik. Mikan ulahala hu l'sheyeh chasid. Now going forward, there's a person who wants to go to the next notch, above and beyond. There's a Hall of Fame Jew. Um, and uh, this is to be a madrig of a chasid. Benimsa, and you should know, you should find, you'll find Haprishus ima chasidus, hukumo ha zahirus ima zahirus ima zrizus. That Prishus and chasidus are like, even though the whole broad thing is chasidus, like I was saying, there is a specific meat of chasidus. So Prishus and chasidus bar- parallel zahirus and zrizus. Shazeb bisur mirav zebiasetov. That this, the first one, Prishus, let's say, which we're about to do is uh, sur mira, is. Is, uh, is stopping and making sure to, to not sin. And uh, the Hasidus component of it is to the positive actions that a person is going to, going to be performing. And uh, this is, um, I guess, this is obviously what we're about to embark on. And uh, I don't want to, because it's going to long, lot, I mean, there's less. Uh, I guess we'll, I want to share, I guess maybe we'll start this part next week, but I want to share something important for the next few minutes related to a very important question. I had this question, I thought about this question, and it was brought up here at this, this paragraph I saw. Not inside, it's brought up in the footnotes. But uh, a muscle, let me see where the muscle's from. Or we saw Salanter, is going to give the muscle. Because the question is as follows. I told you, I even mentioned it tonight, that Mesil Sharm is in a, is written based on the Braita in a hierarchy form. That there are certain rungs of a ladder. Now, if you're climbing a ladder and you want to go from the second rung and try to get to the fifth rung, so that is not very smart. That's not you're not going to be successful in trying to actually climb a ladder. You have to go in order, right? Imagine a person who says, "I want to work on a kiosk before they actually are able to do zahiras." Right, it doesn't make any sense. So you're just like, I don't want to stop sending, like in a broad sense, like can't work on the keys without that. So the question is there obviously the steps get harder, and the more higher up we are going, the more I don't want to say unattainable, let's just say difficult, the more difficult it becomes to attain. And to the point where we might say, like, okay, this is not for me, like this is extremely extremely challenging and I can never imagine myself ever attaining anything close to this madrega of let's say precious or chasidus. But why are we learning this? We have basically half the safer left uh, approximately and so like what, what are we doing this for if it's already let's say we'll be now past where we all are in our, in our on our madrega. And so Rasel Salanter so Slander gives an analogy. He says, imagine if you have a poor person, and a poor person knocks on the door of a wealthy person's house, and it's dinner time. And the person is in the middle of already having like his examples like a 10 course meal. I don't even can't even fathom how someone can eat 10 courses, but we'll go with the muscle. I like all the all you can eat places. I forgot the place, one of the places in Israel where it's like different courses, like 
let alone like getting sick. Like I physically would not be able to even eat more than like two courses. But when it comes to when it comes to the poor person, so you knock on the door, it's middle of dinner time, and the guy opens up and he's like, Do you have any food, have any money? And the guy says, like, why don't you join me for dinner? Come on in. Like, wow, thank you so much. And the guy, he's famished. He comes in, and they're already on the the fifth course out of ten. He missed the first four. He missed uh, like the kiddish, missed the bread, missed the fish, missed the appetizer, like the, say the wings, whatever it may be. And now they're on the fifth course. And so he can't, it's a little rude for him to say like, you know, you want to bring me some grapes? let me make the kiddish, let me have the mozi, let me have the fish, let me have, he's gonna, he's gonna just eat, he needs to eat. He's gonna do what they're up to, right? So there's nothing wrong, of course, say, there's nothing wrong with him just skipping on to number five, right? It's like what we call like chaperain, like grab what you can take. So the nimshal, Sizra Shal Salanter, he says, even though when it comes to midos and working on mitzvah observance, there is also a hierarchy. Of course, a person has to start at a certain level and a person should go in stages in a progression. But you know what? If a person sees something on level five or level six, even if they haven't even achieved level two or three, but they're inspired by a component on level five, or the component of level five that inspires them to do level two, so just take it, do it, run with it, go with it, why not? And he says, especially in our generation where it's even more difficult to, to maybe be, be from, that you want to take whatever you can. So even though we're going to be learning things that are certain that are above certainly my madrega, uh, we're able to see certain things and maybe be inspired and maybe still pick things up here and there, take things that resonate with us and decide to go with it, like uh, jumping in in, in uh, the middle of the meal. Okay, so as a Hashem, uh, next week we will pick up um, and focus really now. I just said like we're going to be doing preachers and explain a little bit what it is, but we're gonna really uh, jump into uh, me the precious. Okay. Um,